I came to Christ in a chapel north, north Bend, Washington. And I think that these drivers on the road, are, the loneliness, the, the being away from the family, the being away from worship, the, the things that a Christian man needs to strengthen himself to, to be in fellowship with other Christians to, is non-existent out there except for a few chapels spotted here and there. It's a ministry to the truck drivers that are on the road for four to six weeks. They uh, don't get home or to church many times. They can't get to churches on the road because of the uh, parking situation, because of taking a semi downtown doesn't work very well. So we provide a church service for them on Sundays. We have a service at 9 o'clock, 10.30, and 6 p.m. We go out, we witness to drivers out on the truck stop on the parking lot. Um, we just simply ask some questions. What does Jesus Christ mean to you? Um, if you were to die tonight, where would you spend eternity? Some starting points that would uh, um, pique their interest. Um, the various responses that we get from drivers, as you can imagine, are very diverse. Um, I've been told to go, you know, places uh, and to get lost um, by guys that are angry and don't want to have anything to do with our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but at the same time, uh, it's open doors where I can share the gospel. Some guys are receptive and open to it. They're kind of neutral. Um, they don't know where to stand or they haven't really given it much thought. When Roland first said he was going to go into this ministry, I thought it was a great job for him to do, but I didn't know how I was going to fit in. But I have come alongside of my husband in various ways in this ministry. Sometimes I get to sit in on the conversations that are going on with drivers, and I especially like it when there's women drivers. I just feel that that's my passion, to witness to them and listen to them. We'll get in probably 100 to 120 drivers in a month's time. Plus the fact that we talk to the truckers uh, in their trucks, the ones that don't come in, um, we share the gospel there, we ask them what we can pray for them. I've stood on the many running boards uh, praying with drivers and sharing the gospel. I see these drivers that come into the chapel and uh, so, so dry, so so overwhelmed with the way life is and, and the hardships on the road and and the arguments they have with their wives because of uh, money and they can't control their kids and they can't be a part of, of, of worship with their family and to be the leader that they, they want to be. I would say the biggest issue you guys face is just family issues. They're on the road for a long time. They face uh, long times being away from family. They don't get an opportunity to attend services. So. We do hold services here at the chapel on Sunday uh, in the morning and the evening, so it gives guys an opportunity to, uh, to come and worship and have fellowship. Terrible thing about today, the truck stops are, you can gamble, you can drink, you can do all of these things, but to worship is pretty hard to find. I participate in the worship service on Sunday morning. We have a wonderful keyboard here, which I love to play and lead the singing. And Drivers really do like to sing. But most of my duties are in the administrative work, doing corresponding with the TFC in Pennsylvania. There are times that Roland and I go to see a driver in the hospital who we know is there and has no one in the city to see him, them, and uh, that is another aspect of the ministry. A lot of stories that we could tell about how they come to know Lord Jesus Christ is their Savior. They'll come in not knowing really what they want, but talking to them, praying with them, then they realize that they need Jesus in their life. And uh, a lot of times they'll commit uh, to the Lord right here in the chapel. We see them kneel and weep and uh, ask for their forgiveness of sins and ask the Lord to uh, forgive them for what they've done. It's a very rewarding job for me at this time in my life. We enjoy being able to work together. We've had a lot of God's protective safety on the way for eight and a half years now. We've been riding back and forth. And we just thank Him for all His goodness and His faithfulness to us. And we just pray we can continue until He's 
tells us otherwise. It's a great fellowship, um, guys that uh, love the Lord, and we just can have some fellowship time and talk. I've been on a lot for over an hour at a time talking to drivers, and so it's, it's, it's a great time um, of fellowship out there. And through it all, I think the Lord has really been praised and uh, we just thank Him for the opportunity that we have. We've been here eight and a half years and uh, we have seen many, many drivers come to the know the Lord through this ministry. We need your help as well. Uh, we need financing. We get our financing through the churches, through businesses, through friendships and uh, also uh, volunteer chaplains. We can always use volunteers and um, most of the time they'll tell us, well, I can't do that. I can't talk to the driver. I don't know my Bible good enough, but anybody can do it. If they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that they, uh, they uh, are filled with the gospel, they can share the gospel with drivers. It's so important to get people involved in this ministry because what we want to do and what we're trying to do is to reach those that don't know our Christ, that don't know our Lord. And that's why this ministry, Transport for Christ, is so important to reach these truckers, to, to, to reach the people in this industry. That's a little bit about what our ministry here at, uh, at Transport for Christ is all about. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>